Hello. Uh, hi, I'm um, Olivier, and I'm going to talk to you about the uh, next cloud proof of concept. Yes, I'm uh, Morris Jofke. Uh, I will then afterwards work, uh, talk about the support process at NextCloud. Uh, and at the end, we'll take questions. So there, this is our agenda today. Um, so what is a NextCloud proof of concept? First, it's a great opportunity to actually use NextCloud in your own environment, connected to your own infrastructure. It's also a great way to uh, understand the technology and how it's going to use this infrastructure. Uh, you will have an opportunity to understand the way information flows through the system, to build processes on top of it very early on. And finally, this is going to be um, a great opportunity to discuss your requirements with uh, NextCloud engineers. Um, we also want to highlight what it is not, so as to avoid any misunderstandings. So um, it's not a full solution rollout uh, that you take into production. Um, we just want to be clear on that. We can work on a roadmap, but this is not going to, you're not going to take this concept and take it away with you, all your users right away. Um, it's also not a migration project. If you've been using uh, a competitor's product, we can help you define a migration path, but we're not going to actually do it during the proof of concept. It's also not a scalability study. Um, we won't be a clusters during that phase, and um, yeah, it will be too long, but you're welcome to test your storage strategy. You can connect various backends to Nextcloud, and uh, you're very welcome to it. Um, also, it, it is not training sessions. Um, you will learn a lot from us, of course, during the process, but we don't want to train a whole department, for example, on how to use Nextcloud. Um, and uh, finally, yeah, this is not an opportunity to get certified as a partner, for example. Uh, there's more to it than just going through a proof of concept uh, to, to uh, get that certification. Um, so, while talking to customers, we actually got lots of similar requests, and we defined a standardized process, uh, which then became our standard offer. So what we do is give you access to our resources during 30 days, and uh, we provide up to two mandates of uh, remote assistance. Um, the process is kick-started by um, a workshop where we define the proof of concept, and uh, we also define what will make this project a success um, that would be beneficial for both of us at the end of, uh, of the proof of concept. We also do a, an architecture compatibility assessment. Um, what this means is that we look at all your systems, for example, and how they can communicate with Nextcloud. But what we'll definitely not do is build all the connectors so that you can connect them during the proof of concept. Uh, this, this can always be a separate consulting project if you need it for example. Uh, but what we definitely do is help you on integrating your user system, uh, your user management system. And uh, so LDAP and Active Directory will be uh, integrated so you can see how it behaves. Uh, we also offer uh, an appliance to get you on your, up on your feet running very quickly. Um, and yes, let's not forget that this is a standard offer, but if you need something uh, a custom proof of concept. This can be defined for you. We're open to suggestions. Yeah, that's what the um, initial workshop is for. So we can really define the scope of what you want to test and then we can work together, but we have to not forget that as part of our you know, standard offer, it's only going to be two mandates of, of remote assistance, and it's 30 days. So usually, if you need to get a lot of uh, your team involved in the process, it's going to take probably longer. So you may require something you know, uh, different, a custom proof of concept. But for a lot of people, what they need is something that can quickly set up, put a few users on it, test if one or two systems work because those are the essential features they need, test a few use cases, and then they say, yeah, this is what we can go with. And then, then of course, you go through staging. That would be another. Everything has to be individual. Everything has to be individual. 
Well, yes, there's a, the initial workshop is for that, yeah. What we want to standardize is really the, the, the time length and the effort we put into the proof of concept. So what are the advantages of um, working with us on our proof of concept? So basically, you validate your high-level requirements with a, against a running installation instead of using a demo. And again, because we've defined that in the initial workshop, then you know if those requirements are, are met. Um, you can test performance. Um, that will help you define the hardware requirements for production, for example, um, and be better at capacity pl planning later on. Uh, you will learn about best practices from us, which will be gathered from uh, similar situations we were in with uh, various customers. Um, also, um, a very good advantage is that you're going to solve some of the issues by working with customers, uh, with uh, our engineers directly very early on in the process ironing out all these issues before you actually go into staging or into you know, production requiring support. Um, and because of the uh, compatibility assessment performed that I described earlier, uh, you'll be able to have um, a better view of the gap between your 2B architecture and what you have right now, and you can synchronize the uh, effort to have a successful rollout and not have you know, systems rolling out in isolation and have many issues down the line. Um, there are more advantages. Uh, one is because we would have been working with you on that proof of concept, we will know about your system and the specificities of your environment, and um, that will help us um, support you better and you transition quicker to production. Uh, I mentioned also that you have um, access to Nextcloud support resources, so you don't rely solely on community support. You treat it as if you were a customer. And because we're guiding you, it's going to require a minimum amount of effort from your IT resources, especially if you're using an appliance. Um, so I think this sums up all the advantages I can see for, um, for the proof of concept. And I'm handing over to Morris. I will now uh, show you how we do the support process at Nextcloud. And if you think about support process, you think about something like this. Uh, on the left side, you have the, the customer who asks some questions, and those questions usually um, come up at a support team, a dedicated team that is, that's completely isolated from, from the engineering team, because engineering is doing the product and support is helping the customer. And usually, the support team has an, a given, a given knowledge about uh, the software and has access to internal resources, to documentation, and tries to get an answer for the customer with all those resources combined and um, tries to get back to the customer with this answer and satisfies the, the request for the customer. Um, the only issue is that from time to time, your support team isn't able to fix an issue or to point a customer to a how to fix the issue themselves or provide additional documentation links or something like that. And then the support team needs to go to the engineering team and ask questions. And this is often uh, followed by a back and forth between support and engineering team. And there often some, some issues arose. Something like, yeah, the support team has somehow misunderstood the customer and communicates the wrong stuff to the engineering team, and the engineering team then can't even get the proper answer because it's not perfect, 100% perfectly that what the customer wants. Or the engineering team misunderstood the, the support team while even um, communicating, and all the back and forth, yeah, simply takes time, and the customer noticed this um, because the response takes longer. And we thought, yeah, we need to address this somehow because the engineering team has a huge knowledge and a huge expertise, and we want to bring this um, faster to the customer because this also means the support case doesn't take that long and doesn't take that much resources. You don't scroll over hundreds of open customer requests because you can answer them fast and close them fast and make the customer yeah, satisfied because you just have the right answers. And another issue you have with this is 
if support has a solution for, for a, given, a given problem, it doesn't even come to the engineering point. And support needs actively give feedback to say, okay, 50% the customer is asking for this specific thing. We fix this with that workaround and communicate this always back to the customer. But at the end, it would be maybe better to just fix it on the engineering side and never have the issue pop up again. So uh, what we think is how a support cycle should look like is something like that. You have some supporting people in a, in a support team, but most of the time also engineering is involved into this process because engineering builds a product that somebody uses and what would be the best way to yeah, know what your customers or users are doing than just talk to them. So here you clearly see there is not that much ping pong between a support member and the engineering team member because there is no need to have this proxy through a support team, but it's simply solved by engineering directly. And this also has the advantage that the, yeah, something like whisper down the lane doesn't have that much effect. You can't misunderstood a man in the middle that just simply translated something wrongly or misunderstood something. So it's a it's, it's good for both sides. The customer has faster and better, higher quality feedback and responses. And on our side, we have fewer requests because we understood how our customers and users use our projects, what are the, the points where they have problems, and maybe how we could adjust the product slightly to match better the use cases that, are, uh, that occur in the wild. Um, to understand this a bit better, I have an example. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the sum up of all of this. And I have an example. Um, this is the screen you see when you share via a public link and hide the file listing. That's an anonymous upload. You can send around this link to five people, then can upload files, and they pop up in a folder, but the people can't see the content of this folder. That's uh, the, the, the files drop feature. And one of the most requests we got from users and customers is, we have some uh, data policies here, and we want to add a disclaimer to this, to this page, because we, as a company, need to guarantee that the data is not somehow, uh, has not no rights reserved somehow, or that there are no copyright violations happening with these files, because the files in the end land on our server and we need to take care of this. So they request that there should just be a little, a little uh, text that is shown to the uploader. And yeah, how you would do it usually from a support point of view, you say to the customer, yet yeah, you can use that page, copy it over to the theme directory, add your text in line, hard coded, and that's it. The support case is closed. The customer is satisfied because this feature is now built in. On their instance, it's themed, but it has a huge disadvantage because now you moved the maintenance factor to the customer. The customer needs on every update needs to check if the theme still applies, if everything still works. They only tested some cases and not a huge range of use cases. And in the end, it's bad for both sides because after an update, maybe this page is broken and not noticed right after the update, but two weeks later and nobody knows why it's broken suddenly. And this looks like the product is buggy and doesn't support this properly. And on the other side, the product itself can't be a, a, the cause because it's just theming and we said, yeah, you need to maintain your theme yourself. So what we did here in this case, we just thought, yeah, would be simple to add for the, for the sharing section a default disclaimer that is shown if it's configured. The admin can say, show this text all the time. It is well integrated now in the, in the product itself. It is, it is tested on our, our testing uh, or by our testing team. 
we, we have it built into the product and understand how it works. We can uh, properly handle upgrades and there is no maintenance cost at the customer side or for the customer admin. The users are more satisfied, uh, the admins love it and we also have fewer requests in the future. So this is one example of how this new process is better for both sides. We as, we as a team understand how the product is used, um, what yeah, paper cuts are in the product that usually get solved by some workarounds but maybe should be fixed properly and yeah, we just make, it, make the whole process easier for, for all. Thanks for your attention. Do you have questions? Yes. Uh, regarding feature requests for the for the versions, or oh, for for what? Yeah, usually those those features yeah, where we collect. Usually we we collect this all in GitHub milestones and then compile a list out of this once there's a release. With the with the latest RC, there is also a forum post we. We really encourage everybody to, to test new release candidates and there's also a compiled list with what was fixed in there and that's also then the case for, for future releases. So this is then also listed in there. Thanks. <laughs>